Alright, how's it going everybody? We're diving into King's Row for the first map. I'm Herix and joined as you just saw, Brunch. How you doing? I'm doing lovely. Excited for some Overwatch. Yeah, I'm definitely excited. Uh, you, you guys talked a little bit, had a little bit of a discussion uh, about you know what to see in King's Row, but I want to kind of jump into it a little bit more if we can, if you don't mind. Uh, because as we know, there's a lot of uh, standard play of you know seeing that Zarya, seeing that Reinhardt. Do you think that's something that we're going to see, or do you think a roster like Eagle Gaming, uh, as you talked about having 12 players, do you think it's going to be a little bit uh, more open, I guess, to some degree of uh, seeing something a little bit more flashy from these guys? I think that's always going to be an option with them, especially considering what we've seen during the first season of Contenders Europe from the likes of Leaf in Gamers Origin. This is a definite possibility, at least in the future. But the interesting thing I want to highlight here is no extra um, members on this roster of Eagle Gaming coming out in the first map. What are your thoughts on that? Well, when I'm looking at that, you know, you look back at what Rogue was, and, you know, typically you saw them playing a dive, right? So looking at a map like King's Row, while dive works, typically you see something, uh, you know, like, you know, like I said, you see Orisa now probably, but a lot of certainly uh, Reinhardt, a lot of Zarya. And I think that's where Super Plute comes into uh, this roster, where he really kind of shines playing those roles of you know Arissa, which which Nox can play, and uh, Reinhardt, which Nox can also play, but I think Super Pluke just kind of stands out a little bit uh, there. And Nico, of course, playing a lot of that Diva, playing a lot of that Genji, kind of fa uh, falls into that dive category as well. And of course, looking on the other side for the lineup of Piece of Cape, I would definitely expect Chubbs to pick up the Winston Krems on something like a Zarya here or the Diva pick. And the uh, pop refresh has been fragging out in the past on the Tracer. And as you touched upon previously, while Dive cannot or isn't necessarily the best choice, do you think that's going to be the opening pick for them? Well, it's tough to say. I mean, going on attack, especially going into the first point, Dive can certainly work. Uh, we, we've seen in the past Dive has worked uh, time and time again. It's, it's definitely a possibility. We've seen even... Uh, the likes of Widowmaker being involved in a dive because you can make that kind of space, create that with the front line. Uh, but the, the main thing here is that I'm looking to see, you know, who's going to be on that Tracer role. It's a very key role right now in the current meta. Are they going to be playing Mercy Zen? Are they going to be involving Lucio, especially if they're bringing in the dive? There's just a lot of question marks right now, especially for me as, you know, typically I'm a kind of guy that covers a lot of NA. So EU has always been, uh, you know, a little bit of a question mark, especially because the last major tournament that I can even really remember doing a lot of coverage on was Overwatch Pit a year ago. So it, it's Pretty been much. a it, it's been a little bit of a gap since what we've seen last from a lot of these teams. And while we're seeing a lot of the same players, uh, we've even seen a lot of mix-ups with the rosters as well. So there's a lot of there's a lot of question marks for sure. One thing that I'm really curious about is in the past we've seen a bunch of COD tank, and now that Mora is in the mix. Do you think we'll see more of that potentially on King's Row or some of the other maps? Uh, it's it's certainly a possibility to bring out here and there. I don't think it's going to be a staple pick, uh, especially just because Mercy is so strong. And when you see how strong the, the ultimate for Zen is and how those Discord orbs work and how even what we've seen from the Overwatch League where you're seeing damage boosted, uh, Jonak just completely murdering everybody <laughs> with those boosted right clicks. I, I think that's going to be probably brought into these games a lot more. Um, and I think we're going to see a little bit more of that. Uh, it's what we've seen in Overwatch League. It's what we've seen in, for the past couple months now. So I think that's going to be what we're going to be um, noticing, at least for the EU side. But here's the thing. Going over to the NA side of the tournament, it might switch up. It might be a little bit different. You know, we're going to be a little bit further along um, and everything like that. So it, it's going to be uh, maybe a little bit of a mix-up. We'll have to see. The NA tournament could certainly be uh, quite interesting in terms of the compositions we're going to be seeing um, if that patch does wind up coming through. So. It, I'm curious to see what's going to happen there, but I think for the EU side, we're more than likely going to be seeing a lot of the same kind of stuff that we saw um, so far in the Overwatch League. I think that's going to be probably a mainstay. And looking at the defensive side, it seems like at least we're going to be seeing uh, that kind of staple defense here with Reinhardt and Zarya being the tank uh, core for these, this lineup here. And of course, just looking around in terms of options for the defensive team as well as the offensive team, We've seen some death ball compositions on offense go through the left-hand side for that hotel or possibly with a Lucio to speed boost their way on that high ground, push the opposition from that advantage position.
Um, you do see Naga on the defense here, on the junk rat right now, just going ahead, putting a trap on the door. Uh, you know, that that often works in my comp games, but you don't often see it working <laughs> at this level, so I imagine they'll probably uh, seek that out, maybe get a little bit of extra charge to start things off or get amazed here, who's going to be playing that flex role. Uh, Nico, we've seen in the past playing a little bit of flex, but I think for this roster, he's pretty much categorized as a DPS. We're probably going to be seeing him a lot on Genji, but otherwise, Crew going to be the DPS here filling in, and there's Get Amazed already starting off with a little bit of that charge that we talked about with that drunk rat. And already we'll see on the offensive side, Hanzo's going to be still the pick, not just Sonic Arrow for that particular choice, but looking into it so far, trying to build up quite a bit. Crew will be the first one to pick up that first blood, popping fresh answers with a return frag. But I like this selection actually coming out from Flippy. I mean, they're getting taken down, but over time we're going to be seeing Flippy actually generate that Dragon Strike. We're going to be seeing that Graviton Surge, and if they do get a good one, if they can silence Bod on that Mercy, they can actually take a, a really nice team kill, on, especially if they get him in that Graviton with that combination. We've seen that time and time again in the past. It's just going to be a little bit of a slow push because they're going to be relying on picks here, and Crew needs to stay alive to make that happen. But so far, overall, looking into ultimate advantage, it is in favor of the defensive team. Drigo already rapidly approaching them. <laughs> Chris, Flippy gets a pick on Poppy Fresh, and that might be what they need, but the resurrect off of the Valkyrie is going to go off. And that's the, that's the case with these kind of slow pushes. You need to make sure that you're getting these qu kills in quick succession, or you can at least shut down the Mercy. But he was able to get that ultimate back up rather quickly. And now Dragon Strike at the ready. They're still waiting for Get Amazed. Super Plute goes down, but there's the res. And we do see that Valk coming out as he's now in danger again. But there's the Dragon Strike. The combo's coming out. Can they find the kills? And there's the Transcendence saving the day for at least now. And looks like Defense somehow managing to maintain composure under such duress from that combination. The kill's also going in right. The rip tire has got to go through. Now got picks up a double kill and pop refresh on the cleanup. Easy peasy for the lineup of piece of cake. And this is going to allow just enough time here for Chubbs to get back into position. We see him holding on to an earth shatter. That could be very, very impactful going into this next fight as Eagle Gaming only has two more minutes here left. But they do have to transcend this on the side of low bomb. The Reptire is still going to go through. Crew, can he find a target? Still looks for it. Gets Marine Lord. And that could be the opening pick they needed. It's going to come down to this Earth Shatter Chubbs. Really under fire now. Taken down before oh. he can actually pull out the Earth Shatter. It's going to be Super Pluke unleashing one of his own. As they're going to open up the site, they have lots of control on the point. Flippy just popping off, finding Naga and Crims. And just like that, Eagle Gaming going to take the first point. An excellent job there, Flippy, making the swap over from Hanzo to the Tracer, and very nicely coordinated to make sure Chubbs gets shut down, not even able to use their Earth Shatter, and as a result, we're going to be moving into the streets phase of King's Row. And Lil Bo, he does have that Transcendence ready, and I really like this matchup, Zen versus Zen. I, I, I posted something on Twitter earlier, Lil Bo and Marine Lord have a little bit of a history together. Teammates for Millennium on StarCraft 2 played each other in 2015. We saw oh. Lilbo take that 3-0 and actually took second in WCS Season 2. And here they're matching up again. Both Zenyatas oh. going ahead. We do see Lilbo actually dropping that Transcendent. Super Pluke finding three kills. They're going to continue on forward here. And Crew was all off on in the solo mission pretty much. Making sure he gets Dridro before the fight even starts. And no Valkyrie, no Mercy in the mix means easy team fight for the side of Eagle Gaming. They have made a good pace so far since that first point was captured out. And we do see Bot and Dridro both with the Valkyrie. So could be a long-winded fight coming up here. Super Pluke now getting quite aggressive. They're trying to make that space. And it's just like that, Super Pluke taken down. Oh, but the Resurrect, Earthshatter is going to find the Mercy, but the follow-up isn't going to be here. No, Super Pluke takes it for his team, but it is two kills for one in favor of the defensive side. Bot going in with the Valkyrie, gets a Resurrect, forcing out the Transcendence out of Marine Lord, but can any other kills happen? Crew still uncontested on that high ground. So now we see, once again, Crew going off with that Riptire, does find oh. the, oppos the opposition there, and Naga takes that kill. Krim's taken down pretty low, but look how much energy this guy has, and he is at 90 energy just going off, trying to find this Mercy kill, but the, Mer or the Tracer is all over them. Flippy is just backing out, and he's, you know, it seems like he was trying to get a little bit of a play there, but he's going to 
actually take himself out of that equation a little bit. And there it goes, the Pulse Bomb inside the Graviton. They find three inside of it. Now it's just about cleaning up the supports. And with that, this could be just enough to push the payload all the way towards that checkpoint. Marine Lord going down now, followed up by Jojo. The staggered kill. Poppy Fresh might be able to run back toward, towards the payload, but I don't think so. I think they're just going to give up on this. And Bond picks up the kill. <laughs> Bloodthirsty support air on the Mercy. Yeah, he actually just saw that Tracer get a little too close and just gave him the butt end of that staff, said, no thanks, let me just put this in your chin one second, buddy. Took him down, and now we're seeing Evil Gaming still surging forward here. Piece of Cake just hasn't been able to kind of find their footing ever since losing that first point, but here's an opportunity now. Lilbo does have that transcendence, so they'll have to watch out for what they put down here as Krim's getting close to that Graviton surge. But here's an opportunity for Chubbs to find that Earth Shatter, big opening as Super Fluke getting low on his shield, but Chubbs now getting taken low on his as well. He's going to look for it here pretty soon. Is it going to happen, though? Over on the high ground, still uncontested. Still looking out for it. Doesn't find the space he needs just yet, but Flippy going in onto Marine Lord as the Reptar is going to come out of Naga, but finds no targets. This was such a good fight, actually, for the defensive side. We're seeing the Earth Shatter come out from Super Pluke, but they should be able to save him for now. Graviton Surge comes out, though. This might be the turning point that they're looking for as Flippy there finds two kills inside of it. And with that Poppy Fresh, answers one kill out to Lobo. And with the Resurrects, they could still turn this around. But Bot, with Valkyrie coming up, gets Super Pluke back on his two feet. No Earth Shatter available on both ends, though. Krems with the Graviton should be enough to push the opposition away. But the Riptire is still rolling. Crew looking for those targets. is still up, still alive. And he gets <laughs> Naga. But is it going to be enough? It's been all back and forth between these two Junkrats, but Crew has just had a target painted onto Naga so far with these Rip Tires. A lot of them just going straight for that Junkrat and just trying to create space. We see the Graviton coming down once again. Crew's going to fall into it, just knock Super Pluke off to, or sorry, knock Chubbs off to the side a little bit. He's going to go pretty low there, but look at that Rip Tire kill. Back onto the Junkrat v Junkrat. Oh, but Bot goes down. That is a huge pick by Poppy Fresh. With that kill alone, it should be enough. But he gets another. He says, one is not enough for me. Both supports got to go down. And with that, it's going to be one minute left. But they finished it. I think Crew they... snuck it. I think Crew snuck it in. Oh, he snuck no. it. They let him go. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Beautiful way to start off the, the night with a classic maneuver. Taking a page off of Soon's book, if you will. It looks like we got a pause going on. Um, but, right. I mean, we did see Crew able to sneak that through, uh, and it's we just got word that it's a technical issue, so we're just going to go ahead and sort that real quick for you guys. Um, I think there's an, uh, an audio issue with game audio happening right now, so I imagine that's going to get sorted for you guys. Um, but in the meantime, I mean, Crew and Naga have been going back and forth with these rip tires especially, but really kind of gunning for each other, uh, which is something, I mean, you, you do kind of see here and there, but with junk rats, it's not typically what you often see. I mean, often what you see is the rip tire going a lot towards the supports, especially Mercy, being, uh, you know, a really, really high value target, given, you know, how strong Mercy is with the Resurrects, and then, of course, the uh, Valkyrie as well. If you can take the Mercy out of the fight, you can pretty much secure it. But what do you make of these guys just gunning for each other? And then also crew... I could, I mean, I feel like Crew kind of won the battle a little bit to some degree, right? Where he just was able to get a lot of those kills, sneak in the payload as well. And I love how at the very end there, especially, after getting that return kill, he just says, whatever, I'm going to go back in, I'm going to get the payload, I get the win. That's <laughs> all that matters. So now we, uh, we see them finish out with a time of one minute and one second, just over that one minute marker. And, of course, if we do see it go into overtime, they will have that opportunity. On, to on top of that, if it does go under uh, that, you know, one-minute mark and they do still finish, we will see them, uh, you know, go ahead and have that extra time. So here's the thing. When you look to start this off, we, we saw already that both teams do like to play that Reinhardt v. Reinhardt play, uh, Junkrat coming into both, to uh, both compositions. Do you expect that now when we switch sides? I mean, we already see Crew on the Junkrat once again. Do you think that we're going to be seeing pretty much the same composition when things are flipped now, or do you think that we're going to be seeing a little bit of a switch up, maybe a little bit of dive composition coming in from the attacking side from Piece of Cake, or what do you expect? I think it's most likely going to be a similar composition. The only thing you would probably see different is for Piece of Cake. Maybe you want to pop Naga on something 
like a soldier for that extra DPS consistent, at least. So it's gonna be an interesting one. It seems like uh, we're still not back in just yet, but more tracer battles, more junkrat battles are most likely gonna be the name of the game. I uh, definitely like to see that tracer. So far, we've been seeing some good things from Flippy so far. We, I mean, really good coordination actually from Get Amazed and Flippy. Those two working in tandem quite well. We saw initially, you know, that Hanzo combination. So obviously they have the coordination, but when we saw him switching over instead to that tracer, I think it just worked a little bit better. I think it was a little bit more fluid, obviously kind of waiting for those uh, those ultimates to stack up wasn't working out for them in the long run and uh, kind of having those extra flanking routes for tracer kind of opened things up for them, I, I would say to some degree. Now on the defensive side here, we do see uh, Dridro is, or actually sorry, the attacking side is on a tour, but he's obviously going to switch to a mercy there but looking at the defensive side it seems as though we're going to be seeing exactly the same as what we saw on defense and then flippy actually going to be on the tracer to start things off here on defense um what do you make of this so far a little bit more standard of course even when it comes to the offensive team they're most likely going to stick to their guns and keep the same composition overall if it ain't broke hey don't fix it yeah. but <laughs> when it comes to the rip tire battles I don't. I want to see more support being tar targeted, yeah. not the junk rats. Yeah, I mean, at at some point you have to get what you can take, right? I mean, you know, when the junk rat is available, your tire's under fire, and you you can see that concussion mine take down tire left and right. So, I, I would say, you know, you, you have to get what you can take, but or you have to take what you can get. I guess it's the saying, but either way, we're already gonna see the coming out. Crew has been phenomenal so far in this Junkrat. I mean, Junkrat in this meta alone is just insane, but when you put a guy like Crew on it, we saw him in the past on Fair looking very, very solid over the past two years. Now being able, able to play the Junkrat once again, I think this is a really cool thing to see, but otherwise, starting things off, look at how aggressively they're holding this right on the statue here. And this seems like it's working out of the favor ever so slightly. Crew already at 60% towards that Reptire. So it's gonna be Naka actually taking mid out. That is uh, already the Junkrat 1v1 commencing. <laughs> well, that's a big opening too, because that opens up the ability for them to go through that lobby and then start Get finding some multiple angles. And that's a nice pick as well, coming out onto Super Ploop. And what that does is it enables them to now get point control. They're gonna take this very, very easily here, Brunge. It's, oh man, that was such a fast offensive round, but we will see Filippi come back to the point. They might still contest. No, Marine Lord takes him out, and as a result, they're gonna have so much time to go get to the streets phase. Now we're gonna be pushing this forward as Krim's very high energy right now, trying to get that Graviton online. You see the lines between him and Get Maze very, very close, around that 80% mark, but Krim's really charging it up right now as they're looking for an opportunity as Get Amazed kind of low. That's the Riptar coming out from Crew. Who's he going to find this time? That's going to be the question as he's getting very close. Oh, it actually gets taken down. Krim's going to find that last final blow. And now we're seeing big opportunities for both sides as Graviton's ready for both. Oh, oh but the Gravitons aren't going to go out on both sides. Who's going to be the first one to fall flip? He's going to be that target. And now Earth Shatter. Yeah, it's amazed, but no other target as a result. It is a one for one trade so far. The Valkyrie's gonna come out, Bod, as well as Jirjo goes for the reds. Crew gonna go down, but it's a bloodbath. And both teams using ults pretty much at the same time, but this is a big opening as Naga is gonna unleash the rip tire, but Crew's gonna find that kill again with that concussion mine. And Chubbs backed up again, getting very low. Super Flute killed him earlier, but he's back up and back into the fray as they're gonna trudge forward, start taking down these tanks, these frontline as, ooh, it looks like Mercy gonna be under duress. He's gonna be taken down. That's gonna s signal the end of that fight and what a long one it was. Piece of cake finally taking that one. They have four minutes on the clock here, Brian, just they're gonna Go ahead and push this payload on forward, getting very close to objective B. And the great thing here for the offensive team is the fact that it, not only did they have their ultimates, but they already have Graviton ready. That was such a fast charge up of bike ramps as well as Poppy Fresh, but it is to be expected by the Tracers. So, so far looking good for them. They might still cut the payload before the checkpoint reach, gets reached, but now the Graviton's gonna come out. Super Plug still finds a way, but it is a one, two for oh so far. 
And that just, there was just too much space in between their tanks and their backline because of that kill that Crims got. It wasn't the best Graviton, but it still opened that fight up for them because they were able to take down Get Maze. There wasn't any protection for the backline anymore. And they were able to go ahead and find those kills, Poppy Fresh going forward and getting that full spawn kill onto Lil Bo and then taking down that Mercy, pushing her forward into the fight. So it worked out, wasn't the best one in terms of overall kills and lethality out of one ult, but overall, overall they're still pushing it forward, getting as close to a Graviton of his own. They might actually decide to either put Flippy or Cruz in there, but now Crew actually taken out. It is going to force the trend set. It's out of the offensive team. Crew will be bright brought back, but it is a lot of ultimates still available on both sides. Lobo is going to go in for the transcend. It may be a bit too aggressive there, but the Return of Shatter is going to take Chubbs down. Super Pluk, the uh, main or the alpha Reinhardt, if you will, but Flippy with the swap over onto Widowmaker is going to get two picks. Make that a third one. Oh my god, this guy is popping off right now. Marine Lore going to be taken down by the likes of this Widowmaker as well as he's getting back up into position. So, as we, as you were just kind of talking about a little bit, Super Pluk has really looked very strong so far in this tank versus tank matchup. I think that's had, uh, you know, a big impact so far right now. But what do you make of this pick here on Widowmaker and how they're going to be able to deal with it? Because they just don't have that ability to kind of contest that high ground. Do you think they're going to have to switch dive or do you think they're going to be able to push on forward with behind those shields? They could s still brute force it as Flippy will still look for those targets. Crew is gonna get the first kill though, and as the follow up kills are still good, they should push for more time in that time back. But the Widowmaker, we've seen her being picked in the past on this last founder phase, just because if the opposing team has an ult advantage, she can kind of reset that a little bit with a couple of picks. So we'll see if that's gonna be still the choice as the walls are gonna go through. And a nice kill as we do see that Zenyatta booped up. That's two for Flippy oh. and what a way to reset it too because not only did they back them off but now that's a second fight in the books just off of the back of Flippy alone it seems. And again, look at this high ground control for Eagle Gaming. You see not only Flippy up here but Crew is up here as well. Damage boosted by the Mercy from Bod. And it's gonna be really hard for them to deal with this. They're gonna keep going in. Naga's gonna try to do something about it, but anytime that they try to come up here, they're just shot down by Flippy. Oh, Graviton, as well as the Riptide crew, looking for the targets, gets the Mercy. That is the prime target you want to return. Graviton, though, is gonna pick up two kills, but still, pop refresh now with Super Blue going down. It's still gonna be somewhat of an equal fight as Flippy. Answers with a kill at the pop refresh. Chubb still finds Lil Bo but it is only Chubbs on that payload. And it's just a matter of time before he gets taken out. He's gonna go aggressive, try to take down the Junkrat. He finds the kill, and that's gonna allow time for his supports to get up there. Obviously, Marine Lord was already there, and the res comes out now for Bod, but now the rest of these guys from Piece of Cake have joined the fight again, and what a pick Whoa. again from Flippy. This man is on fire as he gets Krems, and once again, the opposition gets pushed back towards their spawn. And while Dirtro still has their his Valkyrie, there's nothing else on their book. With Super Pluke coming out on top, with that Earth Shatter, with the Transcendent still available, and Flippy still uncontested, you just have to ask, what what is Piece of Cake really thinking about right now? And it seems like the Counter Widow is going to be their answer. So they do finally have. They do finally have an option here to deal with this, but now it's just about finding these kills. Poppy Fresh has made a couple of shots so far, but nothing has really landed, and Crew is doing a good job of making sure he stays behind, but not for long as Poppy Fresh finds that kill, and it's gonna open up now as Poppy Fresh takes a hit from Flippy initially, but nothing killed off just yet. These guys are pushing in very slow now. We do see the, the fight happening pretty soon here between these Widows, and that might just determine what's gonna happen here. As the Graviton comes down, Crims is inside it along with Marine Lord, but the Transcendent saves them for now, and Flippy takes that first shot oh. as Piece of Cake trudging forward once again. And so far, it's a clear victory for Eagle Gaming, but can they keep it up? The payload is also close to that checkpoint. 44 seconds remaining. Crew is going to try and cut this. It's going to go down to the Fire Strike. Super Plute does have their Earth Shattered. That could be the big turnaround. And here, we're just wanting to see Eagle Gaming. I mean, right now, if they're able to actually pull off a defense here, and then Piece of Cake finishes in overtime, this is going to be a big opportunity for Eagle Gaming to try to take this down in overtime, but they have to win the fight here. Flippy going to be taken down. They don't really have anybody left, and they're going to actually secure it. Piece of Cake taking that third objective point, and now it's going to go into overtime, overtime Sorry, with both teams with an opportunity. Extra time, of course, allotted to Eagle Gaming as they finished it with more time. So now we're going to see the time banks looking like 140 to 1 uh, minute, and we will see 
course, piece of cake starting things off on the attacking side. Do you think we're going to be seeing anything switched up given the time banks, or do you think it's going to be more the same? Considering how they basically just stormed that first point, I think they're going to just go with the same strategy, try to recreate that success. But over on the defensive side, it looks like they're not going to make any changes just yet. And if they play just slightly better, it could definitely still be the better choice. Now, looks like they're going to be gunning for that same exact composition. And remember, they only have a minute here. They did quite well in their first attack, but... Now you have to make sure that you do it in what is a, a, a basically two fights. Uh, you know, it's not a lot of time. 140 certainly gives another opportunity. You can have three, maybe four fights inside of that time bank. Um, but we'll have to see. Yeah, it's 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 really. I mean, you have to like maybe like die off real quick on the first one, get a reset. It's it, it'll be yeah. tough to find four inside of that. Maybe the last one is just kind of dredged in as you know, a little bit of an over overtime excursion, but overall still obviously in favor of Eagle Gaming at the moment, but that can quickly change. As a round will start, still no changes on either side in terms of the team composer. Looking for a potential pick on the side, Screw still all by his loads himself. Doesn't find Naga just yet, but Naga still looking for that potential option. And now Chubbs. Oh. Going forward as well. Him. Oh, they're kind of stopped here, aren't they? A little bow finding that kill onto Lil or uh, onto Naga, sorry. And now it looks like the defensive side here, Eagle Gaming, going to kind of hold a little bit as Flippy under duress a little bit, gonna be able to sustain once again. And now we're down to 20 seconds. So this is the last fight here already, and they haven't really found much of anything so far. But they do have that Valkyrie. That's gonna be very, very big for them, and they need to make sure that Dredo stays alive here. Can't be picked off by Flippy, and they're gonna pop it early. The first kill's gonna go down. They wanna make it happen right here, right now. And the return Resurrect is gonna come out. Bot and looking for those in particular, but Naga still finds crew, the best of them. And in favor of the effective team are the kills so far. Pop refresh, get Super Fluke. Dridro gets him back up as well. And they just need to get on the point. Oh! But no, the return! It pulls by Flippy, goes big with a triple kill. And that might just be enough, Hurix. And they looked like they were just trying to focus down, get a maze. That's not the person you want to look for once he already drops that grab. He had high energy, so you, you, you maybe want to look for that kill. But I think it was a little bit of a mistake as Mercy was left alive, kept get a mazed up as well. But, you know, we saw on the attacking side that cohesion between Flippy and get a mazed. And there on defense, we saw it once more. Somehow, some way, were able to secure that hold for themselves as it looked like it was very much in dire straits. And now they have that opportunity. Can they get this finished out? Can they close the game out here? They only have to get up to 33%. I mean, it's certainly possible. It looks like Flippy's going to be on that Hanzo once again. I'm not sure if he's going to stick to it this time. He might opt instead for the Tracer. It's a little bit quicker in generating that ult. They've already shown that they like that combination just as much, if not more. I mean, what do you think? Do you, are they going to stick to the Hanzo, or do you switch to the Tracer now? I think it's a bit of a gamble if you do choose to stick to the Hanzo. But I would go for the Tracer. As you said, it's a safer pick. Should work better overall in most predictions or most variants, if you will. So we might see him just use the Sonic Arrow and then make the swap over to Tracer. All right, we'll see. I mean, we're only 20 seconds away from finding out what that decision is going to be. I mean, I imagine that given that he's already on it, he'll probably opt for, for taking it. Uh, I mean, it is what they used on their first point attack. It is something that we've seen from Flippy before, so it wouldn't be strange to see him sticking to this, but otherwise we're going to find out right now as he's actually going to go over to the Widowmaker, something that we didn't even say. So this is, uh, again, like we've mentioned before, this is something that isn't really that much of a surprise either you know that there is opportunity for this i mean they can look for those picks just the same but again naga with a great first kill onto crew that junkrat v junkrat definitely looking like naga is is i mean really kind of looking solid in it so far but flippy gonna find that kill and remember outside of these resurrects the defense losing players right now is very very bad for them obviously because that attacking side is just so close from their spawn and as flippy just is able to get more damage out and they look for more picks they're gonna be able to start slowly making their way onto this point and gaining control and just looking at the ultimates being built up so far it looks better for the defensive side but flippy will make the swap over to the tracer might pay off as get is charged up ready to go on the point only 50 percent 
away from that Graviton. But they still have 40 seconds left on that timer. Chubbs facing off against his opponent, Reiner. Flippy no can picks up Poppy Fresh. Poppy Fresh gets the resurrect. Marine Lord somehow finds Super Fluke as well. And Marine Lord with that kill also generated up his transcendence. That's gonna be big. They need it to keep up Chubbs. And somehow Chubbs actually defends against Super Fluke's Earth Shatter. Saw it up in time. And now Marine Lord in position can pull out that transcendence, saving his team for now inside of the Graviton. They're gonna go for the combo. As oh, Flippy finds three again. Oh man, Flippy, the man of the hour here for Eagle Gaming as he picks up another huge triple and with that they will take the tick and the map win. GG. First map going over to Eagle Gaming. We saw a lot of people talking a little bit beforehand. Obviously Eagle Gaming with a very stacked roster coming into this but Piece of Cake looking fantastic in the open division right now sitting at 6-0 on the standings. I mean Looking at this though, looking at how we see Eagle Gaming play, such great coordination, especially between Flippy and uh, Amazing, that it's just been, or, or sorry, Gate Amazed, I mean to say that, I mean, it's been really seemingly kind of one-sided outside of Naga, really kind of slowing things down. A couple of good uh, good things coming out from Chubbs as well, We're able to block a couple of uh, Super Flukes uh, Earth Shutters that really have been kind of tough to kind of gauge and see as he's been very, very dynamic with those, but I mean, First map, obviously King's Row going over to Eagle Gaming. Uh, do you think that this is going to be indicative of what we're going to see from the rest of the matchup here? Or do you think that perhaps Piece of Cake has an uh, opportunity here? They still have an opportunity, definitely. It's not over just yet, but we'll find out soon enough as we'll head over to a commercial break. Don't go anywhere. All right, jumping back into the maps here, we got Temple of Anubis, and that's a map we have seen a lot of in previous weeks, Brunge, but not with these teams. So starting things off, we see a little bit of a mix up in terms of the roster here. Uh, so obviously we do see Nox, Nico, both from Rogue, obviously those guys that won over on NA side of things last year in the first pit, but Flippy's still involved, Leaf, as well and obviously a little bit of crossover between leaf and nico in terms of their hero pool but it seems like leaf is going to be the diva here as nico picks up the genji and again playing with nox so what do you make of that it definitely seems to be probably the better choice and on top of that you have the lineup of hip and pipu on the on the side of eagle gaming the core support of gamers origin previously so i'd like to see them back up in action pipu Picking up the Mercy previously, mostly on that Lucio, will be an interesting choice. See how he was able to adapt, Attackers but just as an early sight at the offensive side of Piece of Cake, do you think Jirtra was actually going to stick to the Mora? No, I would think Lucio should be the better choice. Uh, I still say Mercy. Yeah, it or looks Mercy, like he's going to go yeah. with the Mercy, yes. I mean, especially just given the meta, I, I, Mercy is probably the play i mean if you do see that lucio it's likely in place of the zenyatta uh, you just really need to have that mercy not even just for that first point but also to generate the valk for the second as well so you have that momentum going into it but now starting things off nico and nox looking to counter dive but flippy looking to just make a show for himself once again as he did on king's row here with the widowmaker and he will be set up up top, no Orisa to get those extra shields for now, but Leaf is back there for that support as the rest of the team is actually going to dive closer to the offensive side. Hip picks up first blood. Oh, Flippy taking a little bit of pressure from that deflect, but he has a lot of support back up over here on this high plateau. And now, while we do see finally some damage coming out now for from piece of cake they're still looking to try to dive they still haven't really found a good target to get onto nox and leaf have worked very well in tandem so far to try to just make sure that each other is very safe as nico has just been killing off everybody that they can alongside flippy and and they've really just been kind of halted to a stop and really kind of in my opinion at least it's because of piece of cake's inability to jump on a target execute the strat properly and really just kind of engage the way that you would like to see them 
uh, actually able to execute. So when they, when they start off now, when they're looking for this next fight, I really want to see them jumping onto that high plat, start putting some pressure onto Flippy, and get those supports out of that insulated position. Most definitely, yes. Both teams will clash over there in the middle. Knox will jump out of the action for now. Nico as well as Naga are ready to go with those blades, but over on the support side, both both ready to go with their respective ultimates. As now Naga's gonna pick up Flippy. That's gonna be a huge potential pick, but the Rex should confirm. Nico with the blade right now inside of that transcendence, not gonna be able to find much of anything at all. Bobby Fresh finally does kill off Hype, and as Nico dives into the back line, he should be able to find this kill onto the Zenyatta and will do that just as well. Now, they're just going to have to try to find some more targets. They have to clean this up quickly as Nico taking a lot of pressure from this other Genji here. And Naga looks like he might actually win this battle out with Nico taking down pretty low, but they're going to get the support. They're still battling this one as they have a lot of control on the point. Piece of cake just basically kind of... Winning this one slowly, but over time they will be able to finally take this, and it's just a matter of how much ult charge is going to come away with as well. Seems like in terms of the overall ult charges, they are at a stalemate, but now that they got a point, they have 5 minutes and 30 seconds remaining on that timer. Nox at the very least will have the primal rate, so we will be able to push the opposition off the point and buy enough time for his team if need be, if those staggered kills do come through. So now they're going to dive in here. Nox already counter diving in, gonna be taken down pretty low, forced the Primal Rage out as he got aggressive for that one, and just knocking them around as Flippy just does the work that he needs to do. Leaf with the self-destruct, not only gonna find Naga, but will also take Krims out of mech, so that will signal the end of the fight as Drijo probably gonna be taken down pretty late here as well, but he is gonna come away with 90% towards his ult, people, uh, as well. I'm probably pronouncing that one wrong, but He's gonna he's gonna come away with 85%. So both teams very close to having that Valkyrie, and probably gonna be able to use those in that next fight. But I mean, now with 4:30 on the clock here, Eel Gaming looks like they're gonna be able to make a stop here, at least for this next fight. But what do you think Piece of Cake's chances are taking it not just here, but in the next couple of minutes? They really need to focus those primary targets, just like you said. They need to jump onto Pipu as well as Hip, as he does have to transcend this right now. Or at the very least, force one of those support ultimates, primarily both if you can. But transcendence is going to be used by Hip. No targets going down on either side, as they will continue to brawl it out. Poppy Fresh though picks up the first kill. A lot of kills go in the way of Piece of Cake, but coming back into the fight is going to be that Mercy with the Valkyrie. It looks like they're just kind of waiting this one out to some degree as Mercy can't find a way to get back in. Nobody's going to contest. Okay, finally we do see the Tracer on the but point. So Revive's going to come out on the side of Eagle Gaming, and they do have that uh, ability to come back quickly from their resurrection point. Their respawn point now is Nico taking a little bit of fire, but... This Mercy people really kind of popping off right now with the, with, the, with the healing that's coming out from Valkyrie. Has that Resurrect still available? And it looks like the kills are coming out from Eagle Gaming. They're going to make the hold. Finally, they find their footing here as the point is at 94%. Final kills going through. Hip even being brought back just to be sure. And as a result, <laughs> with 3 minutes and 15 seconds remaining, just one more push is all this lineup of Piece of Cake needs. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get made fun of a little bit for saying a Mercy is popping off with healing, but you know, that's what he was doing. He was saving well, his team. That's exactly what you got to do on that Mercy, but exactly. coming into this next fight here, Brunge, we're gonna see uh, Hype actually holding onto that Transcendence. He has that available right now, so going uh, as they actually probably want to get very aggressive and dive as there's not much time left. They want to be able to get a quick team kill, just execute these guys together so they can just get control. The Transcendence will come out. It will save these guys from the Blade as well. That's the result. Naga's gonna go down. Nox on him with that Tesla cannon. But is any other member of the fancy team of Piece of Cake gonna go down? Nico still answers Krems though. Picks up Pipu. Hip picks up Poppy Pressure Return. And with those final few kills, they're still gonna hold. And with 2 minutes and 25 seconds remaining, things are still looking great for Eagle Gaming. It's just one fight away though, isn't it? I mean, if you think about it, it, it they're down now to having that last. Might get some more action later down the line but so far once again Krems only the only one available with one ultimate on the side of piece of cake self-destruct while it could push the opposition away I don't think it's gonna be quite enough just yet but Popper Fresh picking up Flippy could be great enough well we do see Poppy Fresh in the back now on the point 
surrounding a lot of these healers. Hype goes down, so does Peepa on this Mercy, and now Leaf is just kind of there by himself. Defense Matrix is going to run out. He's going to be able to get that heal off and come back in, but he will lose his mech in just a matter of time here. Still somehow contesting this, and now as the respawns come back for Eagle Gaming, if Nico can find some kills here, he's only at 8 HP, so he's forced to go back and try to get some healing. Knocks on the point, not going to be able to get a Prime Rage reset, and now they're just killing these guys off. Eagle Gaming down to now just under one second it's gonna go into overtime as piece of cake needs to finish this one out they need to close this fight immediately as hype is getting ever closer to this transcendence he finds the uh, oh. transcendence the ult is up from both sides still kills going for piece of cake though even with those skills though it's not over just yet naga picks up the blade gets the best of elite and now birdie lord pick up nox the kills finally go through piece of cake this could be it no opposition left on the point and they do it in the end during overtime what a point behold, though, from Eagle Gaming. I mean, that that fight that we saw them getting close to uh, actually capping it out completely, you know, it, it seemed like Eagle Gaming was going to fold there, but great composure, and then again for a second time, you know, Leaf actually was forced to swap out the D.Va, was able to get over to that Doomfist, knock those guys around a little bit, take advantage of just being able to assassinate those low-health targets, did a good job of that as well, and they were able to hold a final tick for a very, uh, I mean, uh, that was an, uh, that was at a very extended duration that they were able to hold that for. Now, going over to the attacking side, it seems like we're going to be seeing the same starting composition that we saw on defense from Eagle Gaming, where Flippy is back onto that Widow. We're li likely to see a lot of space creation coming from Nox, Leaf, and Nico as they go forward. I'm not sure exactly how they want to position their supports. I imagine Hype is going to want to go with the uh, with the guys in the back as he's not going to be able to get onto high ground, but they might leave the Mercy to actually uh, go ahead and damage boost the Widow at the beginning, and I imagine that's going to be what they opt for. But look at the defense here. Going for something a little bit different than what we saw Eagle Gaming pulling out, and it's not really anything crazy themselves. They're going to use this Mercy to pro uh, prop up Chubbs off of these boxes. They're going to get um, that Orisa up there, and they're going to operate from high ground here. And what this does is it's going to shut down Flippy to some degree. He's going to want to get up on top of the arches, and he's going to be basically all but denied there. Uh, they're going to make their swaps now. Everybody's going to go back up to that high ground. But Flippy, we're going to have to see what he's going to be able to make of this as the shield is going to deny those sight lines that he's looking for off of that high ground as everybody's going to be up there. And really, they're just going to rely on Nox, Leaf, and Nico to kind of throw them around, knock them off of that if possible to allow Flippy to actually generate some damage, generate some picks for himself on this Widow. But the interesting thing is there's no one really on the side of Piece of Cake to contest him if he goes untouched but as the round will start we'll see if they can get any opening picks of course once again as you said chubs on that arisa will be able to keep the rest of his team safe as the the side of eagle gaming is going to push for, for the left side we'll see if their approach will be better off compared to the opposition well hopefully he's going to get spotted so they decide that they're going to just obviously stick up there but now it's up to Eel Gaming. Can the Nox and Leaf get up there, throw them off? They have everything that they need to be able to do it. They can knock them off with the Winston Leaf. They can knock them off with Leaf as well. They're going to jump right in, look to try to get these guys off of this high ground. They already got a kill onto Nox. They're really pushing it into Chubbs as well. But it seems like this high ground control is just looking very much uh, in favor of the defense. They're still finding picks, though. Wow, Dreejo wins out the Mercy duel. But the kills are still in favor of Eagle Gaming, and as a result, they might still have just done it. Rams on the point with Marine Lord. How long can they still be alive for? Nico pick up the finals two kills, and with that, they should have the point. And that's why when you're building a French super team, you bring on the guys from Rogue. That's what you do. You bring on Nox. You bring on Nico. They have such good ability to work together. Leaf, uh, obviously, really kind of fitting into this quite well. You saw them execute. Probably to the best that we've seen so far on a dive uh, execution so far in this tournament. Obviously, it's only been one map uh, and what we've seen of Anubis, but that is exactly how you want to execute that. Nox and Leaf doing a fantastic job alongside Nico, and that's exactly why they brought them into this super roster. But the blade is available. No support ultimates yet on the side of Piece of Cake. Could be the one big fix turnaround, but Nico takes only Marine Lord. Pipu is going to get Nox back on his two feet. Nico with the double kill on both supports. Now going down, this could be the space they needed as Nox picks up Naga too. 
We do see that reset coming out from Krems. He's going to get back up into his mech, but I don't think that this is going to be an opportunity for Eagle Gaming to move in. They do find that kill on the Chubbs, though, and with that Winston down, Nox can open up this Primal Rage, get his health reset. Hype has Transcendence, so they're going to pull that up after uh, Marine Lords, and that's going to allow them to push through. They're going to deny the Blade coming out from Naga, probably kill him off inside of it as well, and they do indeed piece of cake trying to hold on here but man the kills coming out especially from nico have been so so i mean it's been a plenty so far for these guys so nico now gonna find this last kill likely onto this mercy very very low right now taken down by poppy fresh and it seems like eagle gaming might have an opportunity to hold now with that tracer play now finally unfortunately for the side alive on the point means it's clean of duty for piece of cake and they hold without any tick really achieved for Eagle Gaming, surprisingly enough. So now Nico once again with a blade came into the last fight with one, came away with it with another. And now we'll be able to open this fight up with it if he so decides that that is going to be the best course of action. I'm not entirely sure. They might opt for a little bit of a slower push, but now they have to kind of worry about Marine Lord. He's on that Sombra right now off of this uh, Zenyatta. And with those EMPs coming out a lot, it's going to be very tough for them to actually get in there and get some control unless they're able to kill off Marine Lord early or something like that. The blade comes out though from Nico. It's going to prompt the Valk usage out of Didro. No kills on either side just yet, and as a result, even with Chubb going in with the Primal Rage, Naga and Poppy Fresh finally finding those targets. But can they get anything else? Yes, Hip goes down, and with that, the rest of Eagle Gaming are forced to go back towards the spawn. A lot of late kills there as well, as they just staggered them out a little bit. And now, again, e EMP is going to be ready here for the Sombra Marine Lord on this character right now, and... I'm not sure if he's okay. He's going to be spotted out, but of course, holding onto that EMP, they have to kind of wonder when or where he's going to come out and try to use that because if they're all stacked up, they're all going to get EMP'd, and it's very hard to win a fight when all your team can't use abilities. That's very difficult. So we'll have to see if Marine Lord's going to pull that out here. It certainly has that option. And I'm curious if Nico's swap over to the Reaper will pay off dividends in the end as they continue to brawl it out. And actually, Nox popping out the Primal Rage. Can he find any targets? Just jumping around. Doesn't get the Mercy just yet as Naga will pick up the kill onto him, which should open up enough space considering he also has the blade ready. And Naga taken free low. Nox gonna find that kill. This might be an opening, but as as I say that, Poppy Fresh gonna deny that opportunity. And Drijo just gonna hit that final nail in the coffin with the res back onto Naga. They might actually find a low or a late kill onto Nico, who's very, very low right now, but there comes the support from the rest of these guys from Eagle Gaming. And backing up now is the defense of piece of cake. But look at the ultimates they still have. They've barely had to use anything so far to secure these fights. And they have held so demandingly. I mean, it's been insane to see how Piece of Cake has turned this back around for themselves, especially with Naga. Transcendence to open the fight up. Naga has to hold oh. the blade, but Pony Fresh find the kill to the Mercy! Gets the sticky there. Crucial pick. And now with the Substroke being used, EMP as well. Nico picks up one, but Nox still gonna go down and kills still in favor of Red. No blade needed for Naga. No, just the dash reset. I really like their ult usage so far. I, I mean, they haven't really put out much more than they've needed. It has looked very solid for Piece of Cake, and now you're seeing the roster. Now you're seeing why these guys are 6-0 in the open division, why they're able to take teams down like Angry Titans that look so phenomenal coming into this tournament. And this has been a great sight to see so far here on Anubis. As we do see Naga again, like you were talking about, holding onto that blade still didn't have to use it in that last fight. Nox needs to deny that, but Nico getting close to that Death Blossom. He needs to get back into that point. They need to start gaining some control so that Nico can really kind of have that performance that they're looking for on this Reaper. And he does get it. Nox picks up Naga. Blade is still available once he does get in with the respawn. As Leaf is going to lose his suit. Pulse Bomb is going to get a kill. Nico don't want to go down, but gets resurrected. Does have that ultimate still at the ready, and he doesn't need it. Well, Hype now, they, I mean, they don't have their support anymore from the attacking side, but that's not going to be necessary as Nico finds the Death Blossom kills that he's looking for. The EMP goes out, but there's really no ability to follow up on that because everybody's still coming back from respawn. The Val comes out now from Dredro, and they actually get Sombra back up into the fight, and they're going to be backing these guys off, especially oh. now as the Mercy goes down. 
somehow the EMP, while it, there was an initial fall off, is just enough time for them to allow Dorito to get back into the fight, get that Valk off, or sorry, uh, Peepo back up. No, I was right, Dredo, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> back up into the fight, get that Valk off, and get those reses to shift that momentum back in their favor. Now, 45 seconds remain here, so really, we're looking at one, and maybe, we're talking maybe, just two fights. I, I do believe it's gonna be one, though, for them to come back into this, and they do have the Transcendence, but they're really looking at trying to keep people alive right now, as they really now need they're this. They're gonna spell. use it aggressively. Hip is gonna straight away run towards the point. Zumbiata coming through. But Grams with the self destruct is gonna opt into user or just get a re mech. But Reeler though picks up the first kill of the fight. Flippy to go down. Does have the pulse bomb. Might get resurrected later. But Naga picking up Nico as well. Things are looking great for the defensive team. Nox pushing forward. They will be able to find Sombra here as well. He's pretty low at the moment as Sombra gonna be denied. Now the blade comes out. Naga looking for kills here. On the side, he's taken down pretty low himself, but now, as we do see Eagle Gaming coming back into it, they're still on the side over here. Leaf somehow staying alive right, right here on in this little kind of cubby now. Flippy coming back into the fight. They're looking for these kills, but the EMP comes out. And now with the EMP, this should be enough. Overtime does kick in. Kills in favor of Feats of Cake. And they might have just done it. Kremps though, losing out the match. Pipu gets Nico back up on his two feet hip with another transcendence at a ready. And as overtime is still gonna continue, Nico's gonna stay on the skirts, but no! It's not close enough, and as a result, piece of cake equalizes one to one. One, two, one, indeed. What a performance there on Temple of Anubis. Piece of cake turning this one back around. You know, we, we, uh, we've gone over this a little bit. Eagle Gaming with a very strong, very stacked roster, but Piece of Cake, not something, uh, not a team, rather, that you want to downplay at all. They're very, very strong. They've had a great performance so far in Open Division. We're finally getting to see that now as, you know, really, I, I honestly, kind of King's Row s s just slipped through their fingers. If you think about it, Crew barely snuck that payload in. <laughs> Otherwise, it might have been very, very different. They had a minute left, but... Um, you know, he was just able to sneak that through. They might have been able to make it, but it's hard to say. So, I don't know. I mean, what do you make of this so far? And it's a really tough one to call, but we do need to go to a commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the decider match. Diving back into it now, going over to Nepal, starting off on Shrine here. We do see these teams uh, swapping around a little bit once again, or rather, EO Gaming swapping around a little bit, uh, as the six-man roster of Piece of Cake is going to be uh, static throughout, I imagine, unless there's pickups at some point. I'm not sure how that works, but either way. Uh, looking at things here, what do you make of these compos compositions? I mean, what do you think? Dive, obviously, coming into it, but uh, as we do see likely Sanctum kind of switching things up, what do you what do you Five, make of these two teams, four, this roster, at least that three, Eagle Gaming has pulled two, out for this particular map? One, it's gonna be one, probably, as you said, the dive coming through and the counter dive play on both ends as the round will start. It is going to be hard this, this time around. No more Flippy on the side of Eagle Gaming, and we'll see if they will have a little more success on Nepal first point. It looked like for a moment there, Amazed wanted to pause, but that's not going to be necessary, so never mind. So we're going to be able to continue the action here, both sides, either side of the point right now. We do see the side of Eagle Gaming over here on Elephant, or I guess you could call it the stairs side if you're not uh, privy to a lot of the call-outs, I guess. But now jumping into the, the shrine, the contest point now, as Chubbs and, uh, and Fluke both on either side of this point, they're still really like both teams wanting to counter dive, but finally Fluke now jumping in as Hardest has already gotten that attack visor, unleashes it. Naga opens up one of his own, but Hardest gonna get the best of it. And overall still kills in favor of Blue for a piece of cake as they will manage to get this first point. Most likely Marine Lord already with the transcendence as the sound barrier was used by the Eagle Gaming lineup and Bob picks up hardest back up, but again, is it gonna be enough as the blood map continues? They have just been farming ults on each other for the entire duration of this match so far. And now finally it looks like Piece of Cake getting something of a footing on this point. They just have to kill off this Mercy, won't take long at all. And they finally do secure it here, Runge. Now, looking at this next fight going into it, Lilbo did make a swap. He's going over to the Zenyatta here. They don't really have any options in terms of ult usage as Bod or Bode actually just used his Valkyrie. So now you look at this and you see Chubbs has a Primal Rage. You see, you know, 
both divas ready to go with that reset having the uh bomb available but naga very close now kind of actually right next to hardest They're, they might actually wind up contesting each other with those tack visors and it might happen once again we'll see it come through potentially but the something's gonna be used get a maze doesn't get a kill with it and as a result jumps actually gonna pop the prom rage is forced to disengage Naga finally now coming out with the tech visor. Grams is gonna go down during the self-destruct. Hardest gets the best out of him. And as a result, it's going to be a 5v5. Deirdre now coming in with the Valkyries. Gonna get Grams back up. The remake is gonna come through. Pop refresh though. Gets, get amazed. But overall, they should still be able to hold the point. That was such a good pulse bomb for them. It got both of the tanks, I mean, right before, or right, rather right after we saw Fluke go up with that Primal Rage. He did actually get hit by that, and while he does have that damage reduction, it's still a huge hit. I mean, it's a lot of damage even with the damage reduction that you have from Primal Rage. So he was taken down pretty low. They already got D.Va out of mech, so all control, of course, went over to Piece of Cake at that point. They're sitting now at 70% to zero, looking very, very solid at the moment. They do have Transcendence ready, but so does Lil Bo. And also, if you look at uh, Bode, he also has that uh, Valkyrie. That's going to be big going into this next fight, but Naga could potentially seek him out with this Tac Visor. He finds that particular target that could definitely be enough to win this particular fight. But Hardness gets the best of the chops, makes it a 6 5 They need to flip the point. 90% already built up. Self Destruct is gonna come through. Doesn't find any target, but still, so far, Hardness is actually gonna go down. Not entirely sure. I think he found himself with that helix, but over time, he's gonna go through Self Destruct once again. But oh man, Eagle Gaming, you need to take the point. Now we're also gonna be seeing Naga taking out that D.Va once again. Get Amazed has been under fire throughout this series. Luke now backing off because he doesn't have that support of the defense matrix. They're still finding kills here, but Luke should go down. Diva Mech does come out as he pulls out the Primal Rage, so they have a good amount of reset for control now on the front line. Crew in the back at the moment as he's looking to try to get this fight won in Eagle Gaming's favor. They're Pulling back over to the stage right now as crew taken down pretty low. They have to kill off Dredro at the moment. And it's going to be tough because that Transcendence is ready. They do kill Wilbo oh. as Naga with a fantastic oh. attack visor. Oh man, Naga coming there clutch right before Lobo was able to charge up that Transcendence. And as a result, they take first round somehow still in the end. Now moving on to the next map, you have to wonder what's going on with this composition for Eagle Gaming. I mean, if you want to bring out the dive, wouldn't you want to see Nox and Nico? I mean, I'm, I imagine that's going to be, you know, the optimal pickup. But when you do go over to Sanctum, yeah, this 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 composition makes a lot of sense. But here, looking at the first two maps, this is just luck of the draw, isn't it? I mean, they're getting Sanctum as the third map, so now they have to win on both of these maps they're going to be able to bring out something i think that's going to be looking a lot better for them as they're going to bring out this quad tank setup on village and i think this does kind of cater to him a little bit but that first map obviously not going to be the opportune first draw for eagle gaming but as we go into the map two and certainly map three i think it's going to be a little bit better for them but at the very least now they will just push their way on the point of course more with the aoe healing is going to be very valuable here for the side of eagle gaming on the top of that bot could charge up that coalescence very fast as they still have a hold of it the pool coming through coming out of hard this doesn't find a target just yet as bot is going to be the first one to fall down and i think this is really good from piece of cake just taking this very slow looking at just trying to prioritize specific targets getting them as as low as possible just at multiple different angles taking those different angles of threat as well as now they move on to the point they secure it very early we do see a lot of ult charge coming out for the uh lucio here lilbo but they're gonna need more than that when they pump into this uh next fight here as a unit I mean, obviously, trying to take down tanks already is pretty difficult, but Sound Barrier coming up as well, that's going to be even more health that you just have to rip through. And you already used Barrage from Naga, so now you're really going to be relying a lot, I would say, on Poppy Fresh. How much damage can you get out? How much can Naga do? Can he get that Barrage ready to go in this really clumped up tank line? Marine Lord though picks up the first kill with the coalescence. All those targets clumped up means that they will have a slight advantage in that regard. But Krems still goes down in the end. Super Fluke finds that target. And with the air oh. shatter picks up a triple! Three targets down on the ground. But Poppy Fresh still answers. Not over just yet. But Super Fluke swings left, right, and picks up a triple kill to boot.
A really good Earth Shatter. It denied Naga's Barrage. That could have been the turning point for Piece of Kick to just hold that point out. I still really like this pick from Naga. I still really think this is working well for them. He just wasn't able to get that Barrage in time. They wanted to see it, you know, a couple seconds sooner. Try to kill off Fluke before he could turn around and get that Earth Shatter off, but that kind of saved the day for them. Really, really big one from him. I mean, just think about it. Barrage came down a second earlier. He wasn't able to get that Earth Shatter. He doesn't put three people on the floor, but by the way, moving now into the next fight. Naga, 40% here as he's getting low. They're going to get stacked up once again. Nice and clean for Naga. He needs to get that Barrage for a third time. Have the full swamp at ready at the go, and with so many targets clumped up on the point, might find the damage he needs. Of course, Green Lord did make the swap over from the Moira to Zenyatta, so we'll see if he's gonna pay off his Naga picks up the first kill. Uh, another Earth Shatter coming out there from Fluke. Puts a couple guys on the floor. One in particular going to be Krems, but that is actually the Barrage coming out. Naga almost takes himself down. He's getting a lot of healing now from Dridro, who helps him stay alive long enough to pull that D.Va off the point. They secure it. And now 60% on the board here for Eagle Gaming, but now they lose control. And it will slowly start ticking back up for a piece of cake. They should be able to draw this in just about 15 seconds here. But overall, this tank comp is working a lot better for Eagle Gaming. But the problem is on the lineup of piece of cake, they have not only the Valk ready, but as well as the Transcendence, which should nullify Cruz. Uh, Graviton, if it's gonna come out as Chubbs already pick up the first kill of the fight. Bob Perfect with the second one, both supports down. This should be another easy fight for a piece of cake. And this is one uh, talking point, I guess, for the tank composition that we've seen a little bit over the past couple of weeks is that, you know, once Junkrat actually goes, aw goes away to some degree, once we see that nerf coming, I don't really think you'll go completely away, but once we see that nerf coming in, you still have the opportunity to bring out the Pharah. We're seeing so many barrages coming out from Naga because they're so clumped up. He's able to get a lot of that pressure off, and it's not like Pharah's getting nerfed to any uh, to any degree. Oh, but they're getting split up. Now finally going back to the point. Transcendence will be a sound barrier in return, but so far, once again, no kills. Graviton, though, is going to go on the corner. Get a maze, gets one. Second kill is going to go through. Finally! Things go in favor of Eagle Gaming as we kick it into overtime and point swap back into their favor. Unfortunate though that Marine Lord used that uh, that transcendence. I mean, I, I would have done the same thing in his position, but <laughs> otherwise, you know, they still have a couple of options. Those two major AOE ults that they're, they're looking for to bring that lethality into the composition to try to shut these guys down. They need to find it very quickly in succession. You need to do it one after the other to try to get these kills quickly, or else Coalescence is going to get these tanks back up and healthy. They're controlling from high ground. They're going to try to pull them back onto the point by going over to the right side, and they're going to do just that. But look at this. They're getting aggressive. Oh. Over to Green Roller. They're just running straight at him. And they get the first kill they need. Lobo is going to go down hard. This takes one return onto Marine Lord. But is it going to be enough as the swap over on the point is going to be successful for Piece of Cake? Chubbs finds another one. And this could be it. Eagle Gaming might just lose right here, right now. I like the idea to start things off. And as we do see Hardest fall, that will be a quick 2-0 for Piece of Cake. Unless somehow through the miraculous heroics of Lobo, they're able nope. to do anything. But that's not going to be the case. But... I left the idea initially where they got very aggressive, just ran at the back line there, but just so much time awarded from Marine Lord as he pulled away and drew them completely off at the point. Naga was able to get a lot of damage down, really kind of suppress the Zarya in particular as he was pulled away. So I really like that. But otherwise, look at what a Zar or what look at what a fairy Fera. What is wrong with me, man? Look at what a Farah can do to this tank composition, this four tank comp, as they're all stacked up, trying to take advantage of not only the Moira, but also that Lucio to try to get them in. Just cheer for basically. Completely rips but them down, man. We will be back with the wrap up for that particular match as we will move on to a short break. Don't go anywhere. 